I think I've been trying to be too clever. Can you hear me now? <laughs> can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? So I'm looking for somebody to say, yes, you can hear me now. Da, 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 da. So I hope, oh, I can see the stream now. So you should be with me round about now. <laughs> which is running about 10 seconds late. So I hope somebody's going to, around about now, go say, yes, I can hear you. I can hear you and see you. So still say nothing there, nothing there. Isn't it typical? Yay. Thank you, Jessica Taylor. There we are. Good. Thank you, Ogri Grinstar. <laughs> oh, dear. So, well, I had that all completely organised. And my daughter came home last weekend. She said, hey, do you want this old TV, Dad? She's got a new one. So I thought, woo, I could stick that on my computer as a second monitor. So I had that. So it's here so I can see myself and messages down below. That's very organised. And then just before I went live, I, the, you can hear the, the DVD thing in the back going. Rrr. So I thought, if, I, if I can press that. And of course, that's sent everything off. It always happens at the last second. So I won't be able to do that again. Um, so here we are. <laughs> How are you doing? <laughs> uh, and I'm not totally with it this week. I've been away. This week is, well, yesterday in the UK is World Book Day. And they call it World Book Day, but I think it's only in Britain that we have World Book Day. It's like, it's like in America, they have the World Series American football, but it's only ever really played in America. <laughs> so, <it's, laughs> so we have World Book Day here. But I think World Book Day is in other countries, but on different days. I'm not quite sure. And uh, so I was in a school yesterday um, telling stories and stuff. And I was also in a school on Tuesday. So I've been away all week and I travelled up um, to Grimsby, which is right the way across the other side of the country from me um, on Monday. And um, it uh, and I had a, a really interesting uh, thing, and I, I was going to try and get a little video together to show you actually. So maybe next time. Um, of halfway up, so I stopped off for lunch at a National Trust house. So this is an ancient house called Hardwick Hall, in the middle of the country, and it's sort of sixteen. No, I think it's fifteen ninety seven. It was built something like that uh, in the reign of Queen Elizabeth. And it's the most amazing place. And it's just so full of glass um, because glass was really expensive in those days. And that's how you showed your wealth by having lots of glass. Um, I arrived there and I thought, well, I'll stop here and have have something for my lunch, have a sandwich or something and and stretch my legs. And then as I parked up, there was a lady getting into her car next to me saying, oh, it's all closed up today, except she said you can go on the roof. There's a roof tour. She said, see if you can get on that. So I went along and it said, roof tower. Roof tour starts at 1.30. And I looked at my 1.27. <laughs> so I rushed to the meeting point and just managed to join on the roof tour, which was extraordinary. And this ancient, ancient building um, has these sort of, they're not turrets really, but anyway, up, right up on the top, the things that look like sort of rooms up at the top, but they're not, they're kind of, empty and there's glass on the front but that's just for show there's no actually sort of room behind except for one of them and so you climb up one side of the building and then you have to go out onto the roof and right across the roof and it's the only access to this other room which is facing south with a huge amount of glass inside so it's like a greenhouse it was really warm even though it's freezing outside and and this is where Beth of Hardwick Bess of Hardwick um where it, it was their secret discussion room so that they would know that nobody could be over eavesdropping and no one was listening to their conversations. So they could have their secret conversations up there. And the views were fantastic. And uh, so that, that was amazing. On my way up to Grimsby, which is an old fishing port, which is where now they build all the... Oh, I think all the sun... I'm just going to drop that. And now they build all the wind turbines there. It's kind of the major centre for wind turbine technology. And so I went to school on Tuesday. And then on Wednesday, I travelled across country. I went to this ancient, ancient place called Cresswell Crags, which I was going to show you as well, but I haven't had time to. <laughs> and, 
Um, Creswell Crags is like a, 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 a limestone gorge with lots of caves, which were lived in by Neanderthals. So it's really, really ancient. And, uh, uh, and, and I'd always wanted to go there and I imagined it was much more um, isolated than it actually is. And I imagine it to be slightly more romantic than it was. <laughs> but uh, but that was quite interesting. And then I went to Bolsover Castle, which I kind of never got to. Everyone had told me, oh, don't bother, it's really boring. Um, which is a bit, it's a bit naughty thing to say, really. Yeah, but it's really quite, it was very interesting, but in a very different kind of way, I think so. And then, and then I went down to stay with my sister overnight. And then I went to school yesterday in Milton Keynes which is an enormous new town that's built on a, a grid system with hundreds of roundabouts. And uh, so it's, I think if you live there, it's really easy to get around. If you don't live there and you haven't got a sat nav or a satellite navigation system, I forgot what you call them in the States. Um, and if you haven't got one of those, you don't know where you're going at all because every roundabout looks like the next one, really. So, they, and I don't think in the states you call them roundabouts either. You don't even have roundabouts in the states. Would it be a gyratory system or something like that? I don't know what the word is. So let me have a look at what you've got to say. Um, so yeah, so what I should be saying then is I am absolutely shattered. <laughs> I'm probably ready to, to to pull the plug, and and I, I kind of feel like I need to go and have a lie down, really. But um, so what have we got? Um, no sound yet. Blah, 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 blah. So right at the beginning, uh, Merlin Picture Book saying hello, hello. It's been a while. Um, been busy trying to better my drawing and colour usage. That's great. Really going for it this May. Oh, fantastic. Um, I'm two pages done for a self-published picture book ready to go. And I think I'll be ready by mid-April to get it together. Watching these videos been good for my psyche. That's good. <laughs> and ugly green stuff. Hello. Hello. Oh, lots of stuff saying oh, there's no sound. Amy. Hello, Amy. How are you? I'm time for doodles. Um, there we are. Sound on, sound on, sound on, sound on, sound on. People can hear it. Hey, Shu. Cajun Sunshine Cross. Hi, how are you? <laughs> hey, Shu. Uh, we'll, we'll be working and lurking. Okay, that's good. And Josh and Mads. Thanks for coming to our school. Ah, there we are. So I wonder if that was one of the schools this week. So, uh, oh, we, oh, I have to think about, what is this? It, Ital I feel it's Italian, but it's probably not. O istori pe septamana. Saying hello. Uh, says please draw a Viking. <laughs> Uh, Josh and Mads, thank you for coming to our school on Thursday. That was yesterday in Milton Keynes. It was great fun. I had a really good day there. Uh, Amy, love to see you. Hi, how are you? We have rot rotaries. That's it. Roundabouts here too. Yeah, I think I think we have a lot more than you do in the states. <laughs> yeah, and uh, yeah, we we have we have we have roundabouts just about everywhere now. And just tiny little. Sometimes it's just a circle painted in the middle of the middle of a crossroad so you know which way to go so there we are i'm completely exhausted unprepared um <laughs> what what on earth am i going to talk about <laughs> any ideas what should we talk about uh join vikings well um oops i because i've got um there's a book series that i did called viking vic and um I was telling, I was telling the Viking Vic. Uh, oh, I see a person who came from Romania. Okay, right. And um, so I was doing Viking Vic yesterday. And so some of the kids had been studying Beowulf. And so we were talking about Vikings and stuff like that. And, it, and my, my, yeah, and we were talking about characters and stuff like that. Let me find a piece of paper. You see, I'm totally unprepared. But luckily, Great big pack here of Seabright Brighton paper, which I can put down there, and then I can press this button, and then ka ching There we go. We're over on the other camera, and um, and so I thought about when I was because uh, my my character was a, a Viking boy, and he's called Viking Vic, and. When I first started thinking about a character, I thought, 
He's going to have long hair. And can you see that okay? I might zoom in a bit. Hang on. Oops. I'm zooming in. So I thought he's probably going to have a, a hair band because he's going to have long hair. And so. And then, I don't know, whatever I did, I couldn't help but he would start looking like a girl. And when I gave him then a tunic, then that would look like a dress. I'm assuming you think I've got sound. <laughs> yes, so there we go. And then, uh, and then boots. Uh, like that. And so, yeah, a tunic is the, the tunic was a big problem because it looks like a dress and when you add long hair it just kind of looks a bit like a girl um, <laughs> and I wanted him to be a boy and uh, and then I was explaining yesterday how one day I was um, it was actually we have a, a, a TV doctor here called <laughs> His name's just gone straight out of my head. Um, uh, we have a TV doctor here. He kind of does stuff. Anyway, and um, I kind of did this TV thing once and I met him there and we were sort of sitting around having a cup of coffee and he has his extraordinary hair. And it's the parting or something does something really weird and he generally has this tuft sticking up there. And so I, I kind of copied this tuft that he has. I'm going to get changed to a pen. If I can find a pen, there we are, yeah. So so I would, I spent a long time kind of rehearsing and planning and, and working out this character. So it's kind of a, kind of a circle with a line through the middle. And then I'll draw the two ear lobes sticking out like that and then the chin. And then these little kind of weird bits of hair that stick out like that and then and a zigzag hair coming down like that and then hair going like that behind and eyes absolutely smack on that center line and then serious eyebrows and a nose and a bit of a uh, and and his neck goes like that and then he needs a collar and it needs to sort of stand up a bit just like that and he has a a toy shield and so you're getting sound effects as well and studs as well and then he still has a, a tunic and a kind of belt thing there but it doesn't seem so girly now somehow <laughs> and um, and then the really difficult bit is the is the sword so we need a, a hilt there it's a wooden toy sword like that and it sort of goes like that. so we put a wood effect in there to make it look like wood and then again we need his boots so I'll kind of draw two lines that's the sort of the back of the boots coming down to the heel and then you can draw the front and then and then the kind of feet there and then you can sort of place him on the ground like that and he has a a Viking ship design on the front as well of, of his tunic and I call him Viking Vic but of course, I think what most people want is to see um, Vikings with helmets on. <laughs> this is very much about a boy who hasn't hasn't become a, a Viking warrior yet, although he's obviously practicing with his with his sword, his toy sword and toy shield. And I suppose a a Viking warrior, you kind of want to be. Oh kind of leaning forward so you have to kind of and shoulders and I'm trying to think how he would be looking with a wanting to have an axe probably and I went to um, 
I went to Shetland a couple of, I think it's a little bit down about like that. A couple of years ago, I went to Shetland uh, to talk to kids there. And I had this one session in the library. No, it wasn't, it was the museum. That's right, the Shetland Museum. And, uh, and the lady in the museum said, we got all sorts of stuff that, um, hang on. The lady said, said, oh, I dropped my pencil. <laughs> she said, we got all sorts of stuff that you can handle. You know, exciting Viking stuff. I thought, ooh. So, so we went, went back behind uh, the, 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 the museum to see what they had. And she came out with all sorts of bits. She said, oh, this is Viking fishing line. Oh, that's not very exciting. And Viking fishing hooks and things. And then there was a Viking axe, which had been dug up. And it was, it was really rusty. It was just a piece of rust, really. But it was a Viking axe. And so all these kids came in. And uh, I was showing them these Viking hooks. They weren't terribly excited. I said, oh, you'd be really excited with this. I said, this is a Viking axe. And they all kind of looked at it. They weren't very impressed. And then one of the kids put his hand up and, and he said, my dad's got a much better one. And another kid said, yeah, so it's fine. <laughs> so in, in, um, in Shetland, then they have... Um, up Heliar, it's right, right about this time of year where all the, the they have these squads of Vikings where they all kind of get together and they march around the town collecting money for charity as things as well I think and probably drinking a lot and then they have a great big Viking ship and they carry it around the town and they set fire to it and send it out to think but of course they all have these Viking costumes with these amazing axes and things <laughs> so, so I was in the wrong place to try and um, impress the kids with real viking axes anyway, let's, let's get back to the drawings <laughs> so i'm gonna have and and then now you see someone's gonna say see if i put a double bladed axe somebody's gonna say no the vikings never had double bladed axes and so i'm gonna want him to be quite chunky and he's gonna want a tunic as well and we're gonna have a leg is this fitting on yeah quite well and then that's gonna sort of come there. What's that noise? I can hear a noise behind me, it's my jacket. Um, and then that's gonna be something like that. And then we want that kind of crisscross thing on the feet, don't we? And so he's go we're gonna give him a, a helmet like that. And again, you know, there's this great big thing about they never had horns, did they? But I'll give him wings why not because that's much more exciting i think and then he's got to look really uh, mean and a great big nose and a, uh, 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 and a moustache and uh, teeth and a great big beard so i can probably start inking him in now can't i and i think so we'll have the wings like that and then we'll bring the um, the the helmet around like that and there's probably a strap around the front and it's very tricky to um, when you're doing them you really have to do your research because you start making assumptions and you think oh there's that really nice mask from the Sutton Who burial and but that's from a much later date and uh, so I'm gonna have his eyebrows just slightly sticking out there so that we can get uh, really Kind of angry eyes, mm. berserker eyes. They are, are you, yeah. Where did I read about that this week? About hemlock, and about the the Vikings would have drink hemlock tea or something before they went berserking, and it would kind of make them um, go mad, you know, madly strong and lose their inhibitions and they wouldn't feel pain so they could just go sort of <laughs> marauding <laughs> so it's going to be something like that isn't it and then we're going to want to have he'll be something like that <clears throat> and his axe will be there and here we want to have one, two, three, four, and so it's all kind of, you really do have to plan these things and kind of work them out. 
how they're going to how they're going to go so we can and also i think there's also this thing about you know which bit is nearest to you so you want to do those bits first um so that um you can put the bits behind behind can't you i haven't given him a, a shield have i mm. never mind <laughs> he lost his shield he was so keen to get pillaging he's lost his shield he's just got his axe left and then this will sort of come down to there and then if we put kind of bulges bulges uh, 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 something like that then that will kind of bulge around uh, you, you know what i'm trying to do those kind of ties that go around and then i'm not quite sure what is i haven't done serious research on viking footwear uh, <laughs> so uh i'm gonna do something like that so i can do uh, 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 uh. i think this is a i think this is a first draft <laughs> and yeah if i was doing this for a book then i'd just kind of just kind of work this bit out and then and then I'll do endless copies and versions, twisting it to get the right angle. So maybe we could have him, you know, coming down a, a rock like that. So it makes it more, more exciting, doesn't it? There we go. Uh, uh, uh. Oh, I have a leg in there with that. So we can put a bit of, bit of hatching in under there, maybe. That's really scribbled, isn't it? So, um, I think yeah no I mean if I was doing it for a book obviously I'd take a bit longer <laughs> because I'm aware of you kind of watching going oh god this is going on a bit isn't it? <laughs> when's he gonna stop <laughs> uh, this, I think the hatching uh, hatching is a really boring bit to watch isn't it I think but um, yeah so a bit more like that and then maybe oh we could have have the sea in the background and oh where are we now we want to have a so of course this is kind of an illustrator thing you know you want to put a a viking ship in the background and of course it's he's just come from this ship and and they're going to put all these shields on the side but of course you know all his fighting friends will have already taken the shields off the ship um because they're using them in the battle and uh, do something like that and, and and of course if they were in battle they wouldn't have the they wouldn't have, <laughs> they wouldn't have the sail up either would they so um and then maybe i can put some thing like that in there just to give that kind of and then we give a bit of shape to the whole thing and those are the planks and then we need some kind of patterns on the shields as well and a few more waves and some seagulls and stuff like that and there we are some marauding viking for you um good what have we got in here a volvo in the background absolutely <laughs> uh, and no, what a viking with a helmet yeah but it's okay there we are and uh good so draw the shield on the floor he dropped it in all the mayhem absolutely yes where are we now you see this is how stories come together i always think you know i i love it when i do visits you can, so you're not seeing the whole of the shield so i don't have to draw it all um are we on screen what do we what do we get i need to be doing that don't i um I love it in schools when I do this kind of thing and get kids drawing and and it's the ones who hate writing usually the boys of course um and they kind of draw something you know a viking or something it's, oh can I can I draw the shield on the floor and can I draw a ship in the background and you know can I have a, a an f52 coming in and bombing the place in the background and uh, or what <laughs> whatever and and what they're doing is is kind of 
writing the first draft and very often teachers come up to me afterwards and say that's amazing that kid they've gone and written the story you know they wouldn't normally write anything but because they'd drawn the first draft they um they visualized it and they're obviously you know visual kids and they're not terribly interested in writing but once they've drawn the picture, they, they can see the story then in their heads and they want to get on and write it and put, put the words together with the picture. So where are we now? Um, uh, right, Bob in the background. Re oh, we can go back to me. <laughs> uh, Rima Rama, nice joy, thank you. Um, Jessica Taylor, do you have any tips on learning and practicing gesture drawing? Um, well, first of all, you know, uh, get a mirror. <laughs> Getting a mirror is really good um, because you don't have to worry about getting people to pose for you. Um, and so, yeah, just spend hours and hours in front of the mirror pulling faces and kind of seeing how things work. and acting you can act those sort of oh, things in the mirror um and and kind of look at you know look at lots of other ways how other illustrators do gestures and how they do things um and um i suppose that's more expression isn't it that rather than gesture um and if you've got a big mirror then you can pose i've got i've got a smallish mirror here um if i go to that oh, let me, oh, where can I see? Where can I see in the background there? I can't see. So, can you see just above my head here? <laughs> there's a tight, there's not a very big mirror, but that's big enough for me to um, sort of you know do kind of poses and get the feel for the pose that I want. Um, so, when I'm when I'm illustrating something and I'm thinking, you know, oh, I really need them to be doing this, you know, running forward. So so partly I kind of act the pose <laughs> and kind of think, what am I doing here? And and I think by acting, and I think also acting also, you get the expression in there as well somehow. And you very often see illustrators pulling strange faces while they're drawing because they're, they're kind of acting <laughs> as they put the, put the expressions into the, into the drawing. Um, and, uh, you know, for gesture drawing, I think, I think, you know, life drawing is really, really good. So if you can get to a life drawing class um, and, and, and sort of if you've got a particular, if you've got a good life drawing teacher, because I know when I did life drawing at college, they didn't, they didn't want to spoil your style and teach you anything. So they never really taught you what was going on. You were just expected to work it out somehow. But um, if you can get somebody to teach you a bit of life drawing and, and, um, you know, with naked people, uh, you can you can see how the structure works and kind of learn a bit about skeletal structure and things like that. And if I go back over to here, um, it all comes down in the end to. Uh, am I fitting on it? Yeah. So it all comes down to um, stick men really uh, and so that's a very simple stick person um, and then you can have a more sophisticated stick person we'll have shoulders and we'll have elbows and hands um, and then hips and you know legs and feet so it's a bit more sophisticated but fr from this you can work out an awful lot of gestures so you know that kind of marauding viking if you stop if you make that more sort of head shape rather than circular, then we're going to tilt that forward a little bit. And there's a neck will be tilted. And then you've got the shoulders will be at an angle. Um, and the arms coming forward. And then that will be coming pretty much down and then pointing straight at you so that you can have the hands there with the, with the axe like that. And then and then the the body's going to be sort of actually no the body's going to be more curving around that way I think probably, and then the hips will be kind of there, with the leg coming forward, and then 
that one coming back there like that and and you can work out gestures absolutely with these really really simple shapes and stick people um i'm trying to think how it'll be more actually he's more kind of uh, like that i think really isn't he so there's that will be there and that's coming down uh with an axe and yeah that's more like it so so <laughs> if you don't have to sit and talk about it while you're doing it it's probably a bit easier and then from that you can then start sort of you know adding sort of more shape to the whole thing and um and like that and then uh could i find some I'd then lay out pad paper so then, you know, as an illustrator, there's you know, lots of tips and tricks and hints. You don't have to get it right exactly first time. So here, um, you can probably see through. Let me zoom in a bit. Oops. Zoom, zoom, zoom. Um, then you can, you know, put your helmet on there with, um, you know, beard. And you can sort of see what's going on. And you're gonna have a hand there and then the axe like that and there's the body and you know that's where the waist is going to be so that's where the belt will be for the tunic and then we've got a kind of skirt for the tunic and then that will come down there and then you kind of got boots there and and boots there and that that's kind of you know this gesture uh has been built on you know this this very very simple stick person skeleton so i think you know that's 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 my tip <laughs> i hope that helps a little bit <laughs> what else have we got what else have we got all those in the background there we are um dip 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 box of soda crackers with some falling out so mm, soda crackers is not something that we have <laughs> so i'll just have a look on that is probably what i think it is so let's have soda crackers um oh i see yeah correct. we call them cream crackers there you are you see you you say tomato i I say tomato, you say soda crackers, we say. <laughs> and of course it depends on the box that, that you've got, but. Um, change camera again, there we are. Um, uh, maybe it's, mm, it's a bit. So, I think that's gonna be probably a long thin box, assuming your soda crackers are what we're, I'm talking about, and you're probably going to want to sort of flip the end open so you've got the ends there it will be something like that and then you're going to have kind of one has just fallen out then you've probably got the next one is kind of almost on top but there's going to be more of an angle really it's a bit tricky isn't it um so the third one will be maybe something like that and you can see something in there so that when so this is a flap on the front there and that's a flap that's a flap but now here we need to draw this one's on top so this will be kind of on top and then if we curve the edges that will give it a thickness and then this one will be sort of something like that and then if we put, I'm not sure each brand has its own different kind of spotty pattern. And then we'll know that that's in there as well. And then that will sort of come out there like that. And then that will be something like that. Cracker! And where should we have the light? So if we have the light coming this away, then you'll have sort of shading there and you'll have shading on the side kind of all the way along there and you can have shading inside there too 
like that and that'll be kind of half shaded and that might cause a little bit of shading there that'll be slightly shaded and that side will be slightly shaded we might get a bit of shading underneath each one there like that and then we might need to just put a little bit of kind of shading on the edge just to kind of give it a bit of thickness to give it a kind of a depth to the to the thickness of the cracker there and then we put a line there and a line there and that'll put it on the table perhaps i should do that for draw stuff real easy there you are do a pen get back to that perhaps i should do that draw stuff real easy and take a bit more time over that one but that's how you would kind of think about it and work it out um we draw a box of soda crackers done that there we are uh can i draw a big box of toys and accessories that'll take me forever <laughs> it's a kind of it's a kind of thing sometimes you need to do in a picture book um and you're in a in a kind of a, in setting a a scene um, for, for in a children's book where kids are playing and then you've got to have a a box of toys and you know, oh what toys am i going to do and you and you end up doing sort of classic toys because if you put anything sort of modern and what's you know cool now it's going to go out of date very quickly so um yeah it's tricky isn't it um where are we now moving back it's very happy use my shield suggestion ha oh, there we are uh, alejandro would that be alejandro I'd like to think it's Alejandro C. Hey, is you? How are you? Good. Uh, William Hayward, Viking Vic is left-handed, like me. I've never thought of that. <laughs> it's never crossed my mind that he's left-handed. It just kind of fitted, fitted, fitted that way on the front cover. <laughs> Uh, everybody, you are clever. I wish I could draw like you do. Well, it's practice, 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 as Amy says underneath. Lol. Yeah. Um, Amy, it's just like learning to write. Exactly. And that, that's kind of what I said. It was my, um, my book. Uh, <laughs> everyone can draw. <laughs> I say in there. Um, I said, it's just like learning to write. And when you get, actually, when you look at the word box, you can write it with the same number of lines and and writing is just like drawing and you know you 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 learn those letters oh i just dropped my pen you learn the letters a b c and then you learn how to put those letters together um to create little words and then you learn how to put those words together into paragraphs and then you learn how to <laughs> into sentences and then paragraphs and then chapters and and so it goes on and you know you've got to start small you've got to learn to make those shapes then you've got to learn how to put those words together. Then you've got to learn how to put the words together in a sentence. It's just the same. But you were given so much time to do that at school. And they pushed you and pushed you to, to learn how to write. And they weren't pushing you to learn all those drawing lines. So you have to do that yourself, I'm afraid. There you go. Uh, do a dragon in the box. In the, in the U-box, the toy box. <sighs> Well, see, sometimes doing something like that makes things a bit easier. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so if we have toy box like that, and I suppose everybody's toy box is different, isn't it, aren't they? So, um, so I'm thinking, are we going to have a handle? I don't know. So let's make it an old kind of magic-y toy box and it'll have a, a key on the end so it's a not like a pirate treasure trunk kind of thing like that so that would be the lid going up and this is all you know this probably looks you know oh how's he doing that but it's all just parallelograms but again it's all about kind of learning the relationships of parallelograms and how they kind of work together um, and that's going to go in a curve so you'll get a curve on the inside um, and then <laughs> so <laughs> how big is this dragon going to be inside <laughs> and maybe his wings are kind of st sticking out a bit uh, <laughs> so he's got little ears on the top 
like that and this is angry eyebrows and eyes and then we need to kind of uh, that will sort of be coming down about there and then I'll give him a funny little sort of hook there like that and then little tiny little wings he's got cute little wings this will be kind of sticking out like that and then that will be the top of the box coming to about there so we want to get another wing in over here um, about like that something like that and then that'll be a nostril a bit of smoke coming out of it probably um, and then we can have the the rest of the box coming down there like that mm -mm -mm. have little studs on it won't it like that and then you've got the kind of the lock bit there and then I have the bit that sort of flaps over on the lock up at the top uh huh uh this is the inside of it this will sort of come across like that and then we'll come over there maybe a couple of other yeah let's have a couple of other sort of straps like that something like that um and that's coming there so here we want to have the handle like that and that's there and again we'll have that quite dark with the the light is coming this way this time so we'll have the shadow going that way maybe a few spots on the wings as well and we can sort of shade those wings in it'll be quite dark down there dark there dark there and dark there and then that would cast a shadow down there as well and then we we'll put it in the wind in a room so that's like the kind of the what's it called <laughs> it's not the Wayne Scott the Wayne Scott's up here isn't it uh, skirting board so that's the skirting board there and then that's kind of the thickness that would be quite shaded and that would be shaded under there too yeah, like that. and then we can maybe make it dark around the eyes to make it look a little bit more <laughs> there we go that's a dragon poking his head out of the toy box. <laughs> and to make sure it's a toy box, we need to know, we've got some other toys like A, B, uh, how are we doing on that? Oh, something like that, have a, um, have a spinning top kind of thing. <laughs> and uh, we probably need a, a terrified teddy bear as well. Uh, oh, I'm, 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 I'm getting tired now. Anyway, it's not a very good teddy bear at all. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. How are we doing? Um, I can't find my pen thing that I need. Uh, so there we have. Um, where are we now? Amy Diaz yeah, said, practice, practice, practice. Can I draw a lemon tree? Oh, do we have a lemon tree in the toy box room? I don't know. We can have a little, um, have a little kind of a pot, one in a pot, couldn't we? Like that should just sort of come up like that, and then you want to have oh, a couple of lemons. Uh, oh, they're terrible shape, aren't they? Like that. Uh, so if we just get a couple of little lemons like that and then we want a few kind of twigs like that and then some leaves things like that i'm kind of imagining that i would paint that which would make it look a lot better <laughs> so uh yeah these are all kind of rough first drops remember so where are we now yeah <laughs> so, well, I think, and um did I just show you that? I just... was, I, was I on the drawing thing? Was I actually drawing that? I don't know. Did you see me draw that? I forgot to change every camera. <laughs>
So, where are we now? Um, blah, 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 draw something for spring. Do a dragon in the toy box. We've done that, we've done that. Hello, she, my granddaughter loves bees. The wings are so tricky. They certainly are. I've done um, bees in stories, and when I got them f flying, I kind of, but I do cartoony kind of bees sort of like this, so maybe I'll give them a little funny sort of proboscis kind of thing and little thing like that and then they'll have a kind of little hairy kind of body and some stripes like that and then they need some um, wings and then the, uh, the legs um, and then the, the wings are just really really difficult aren't they so I can tend to kind of <laughs> just try to hide them in a great kind of whir of whoosh marks basically like that and then sort of few whoosh marks so you know which direction it's going and kind of, yeah it's a cop out that's a bit of a cop out isn't it so what what happened there there was that yeah did you see... did you see that did you see me drawing that showing a different thing on the screen to, to what I thought was on there yeah so uh, there we are Matt Marshall I have that book yeah yeah good well done <laughs> relax says bonsoir <laughs> whoops good afternoon uh, I mean Bodger could you do a series where we can draw along with you please but you would have to draw a lot slower that has crossed my mind and and you see the problem there is to know quite how how you're keeping up so that would kind of need to be like a, a webinar thing really you know um which would be much much different amy says lol so cute thank you uh i was drawing a character the other day and realized i didn't know how to do a flannel pattern a flannel pattern i'm thinking is maybe um i'm thinking yeah i'm thinking a flannel pattern that's probably a, a check so if you have a, a, a piece of cloth like that, then I would do that in um, just kind of half tone kind of thing like that. Uh, ha it, it, you see, I started off in printing, so I did think in terms of half tone. Then I would cross hatch in that direction. Um, I'm wondering if this is what you mean by a flannel pattern. And then you can also, you know, sort of add kind of extra lines in between, that kind of thing, to get that kind of um, tartan pattern. Some people call it plaid, I think. Uh, Come back to there. Very weird. Yeah, I'm finding it kind of, yeah, good. Uh, where are we? Plaid is another route. Yes, we got there. Plaid tartan. Yeah, we got there in the end, didn't we? <laughs> I wasn't reading far down enough. Uh, oh, do I give you a flannel pattern? Oh, you mean plaid tartans? Yeah, sure. Plaid is another route. There we go. Nice camera angle. Relax. I was thinking a flannel shirt. I see what you mean. Yeah. How have 45 minutes passed already? Yeah. yeah. I'm going to give you another 10 minutes and that's about... i tell you what I'm going to do if this works. While I'm there, I think, I can't quite see. That's the one. I have a message for you. If you enjoy my videos and want to improve your drawing, watercolor and illustration skills, or just want to support me so I can keep making YouTube streams and videos, then come and join us on my Patreon page. We have a secret shooby doodling Facebook group to share work and ideas and I post longer and more detailed tutorials. Click the link in the video or in the description box below to find out more. Ta-da! You see, I, I have the power at my fingertips. I need to do more adverts and stuff like that. Don't I? I need you to come and join me on Patreon. I really do. <laughs> if, if I'm going to keep doing this, uh, I, I need a lot more support. So uh, even if you don't want to do the things on there, then if you just want to support what I'm doing here, live things and stuff like that, it, it would be very, very helpful. Anyway, where are we? Where are we? And it kind of gives me a moment to doing an advert that gives me a moment to get my breath back. So, uh,
relax, camera. I don't think he looks at the chat. I, well, I, well, you can't do everything. You can't do everything. Um, but I do come and look at the chat in the end. Uh, Hannah Lim says, patient, it takes time. It does. Jean Coelho, good morning. Good morning. Uh, it's, it's tea time here. It's come, Yeah, uh, it's good afternoon going on into evening here. Uh, relax. Ah, much better. Not my real name, though. That's a good name. Isn't it? <laughs> I love your bids. Great inspo. Thank you. Uh, you a bit of a camera switch camera. Uh, you forgot the camera one again. Yes, I know. It's 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 very difficult keeping up with what's going on when you're on your own doing this. Flannels in the USA are shirts. OK, uh, the drawing is not being shown. Sorry about that. Uh, we need to hook him up to electrics and give him a job when he forgets. <laughs> that's, that's the way to do it, isn't it? Um, yeah, no, love you. No, we didn't see uh, where... We're on you now. Yeah, relax. No, we did not. Ha ha. <laughs> May you draw Donald Duck comics? No. <laughs> no, I don't do Disney stuff. No, there's there's millions of people on uh, on YouTube will do that for you. Uh, I mean, perhaps give us a bit each week as we can always go back and look at the video again. Yeah. Well, I've got hundreds and hundreds of video. I've got actually thousands. I think no. I think between here and my other channel, draw stuff real easy, which is kind of a bit more easy uh, I've got I think about 17 1800 videos so somewhere in amongst all that there is something for you to to draw along um uh Moomin bets toy soldier please I've done some soldier drawing how to draw soldiers I've done first world war soldiers and things I've done a few things like so if you if you go into YouTube and type, type shoe rainer soldier you'll find things come up <clears throat> In fact, most things you will find if you just put Shoe Rainer in a subject, it'll come up. I've done an awful lot of stuff. Uh, can I do some storytelling vids about your life or in general about any topic? I've done, I've done drawing, my, draw my life videos and I've done quite a few story videos and things like that. So just type, type in Shoe Rainer story into YouTube and see what comes up. Um, Chris Miners, great show, Shoe. I'm only listening as I'm illustrating my second book. Good for you. Well done. Using antique pens. Ooh, cool. I, I've had, uh, I remember when when I was at art college and there was this guy um, and he used to uh, have a shop in, oh, what was that place where they take all the criminals? Bow, Bow Street. Bow Street. That's right and um which was a pretty run down place and then um and then when covent garden got all popular suddenly bow street got expensive and he had to move out and um and i'd i'd heard that he had this certain kind of nibs and things like that and i found out where he'd moved to and he moved inside another art shop and I went along to see him and i said i hear i can get such and such a nib from you and he went who told you that? And so I had to sort of give him the right password and sort of which artist had told me that. And eventually he let me have this nib. It was a sort of really old gillet uh, or gillet nib, um, which he got a, the, the, the last supply of. And these sort of things had been made, you know, 100 years before. And uh, so, <laughs> so he let me have one of these nibs, but he was being very, he wouldn't sell them to anybody. <laughs> Um, what have we got? Blah 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 blah. Right. Sorry, I'm used to streamers who reply instantly. The streamers can do that because they're just kind of talking straight in. But once I move it over on the camera, I'm I'm concentrating on drawing and I'm not looking at at, uh, at what's going on on the screen. You can't do all that at the same time. So I'm not really a streamer streamer. <laughs> I'm I'm doing drawing. Um, Gene Coelho, California here, gearing up for the day. Cool. I bet, oh, I bet it's nice in California, isn't it? I bet it's nice in California. Sounds like a song. Uh, I am Trimble. Tryon, I know. There we are. Da Amy, oh, daffodils. I've done daffodils before. I have done. And the daffodils are coming. I can see. I can see outside. Through, I've got the blind down. But I can just see. I've got daffodils out in my garden. Uh, and I've got frog spawn now in my pond. Oh, let's do them. daffodil. Let's go over to so, <laughs> daffodils. Um, it, it, so you've got a stalk coming up like that. 
and then it sort of comes around at not quite 90 degrees but then you kind of got a, an ellipse and an ellipse there which funnels out into a, 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 a a trumpet shape like that and then I'm pretty sure they have I think it's five petals don't they say so one so you want to sort of be going like that it's a bit like a wind turbine and then that would be going there that would be going there so that um, so that we need to draw can you see what I'm doing I'll just zoom in a little bit like that there we go. So we need to draw, draw the little kind of furry, furry, it's not furry, is it? But the, you know, the bit on the, the top, the trumpety bit. And then that will come down to where it sort of started from. And then, and then we've got these petals which sort of come out in that kind of a shape, don't they? And they'll be going something like that. And then we've got the back coming down there like that. And that's bas basically a draw difficult, roughly. I'm not sure about this one at the back. I think that, that would actually be more hidden, in fact. I think we're seeing too much. I think we're seeing too much of that one as well, probably. But... That's kind of uh... <laughs> daffodil for you, Amy. Spring is here. <laughs> I have to keep finding my pen. Uh, where are we? Where are we? Where are we? Where are we? Um, uh, are we going up at the? There we are. Make spring come faster. There we are. Ollie Bob, you remind me of my dentist. Ah. <laughs> Not a bad thing. Good. It's good. It's good to. Uh, <laughs> it's good to like your dentist. <laughs> uh, not my real though. Do I have any vids about Greek mythological creatures? If you go to draw stuff real easy, so type in draw stuff real easy, all one word, uh, and put ancient Greece. And I have somewhere. Uh, um, I probably haven't got one a copy here. Oh yes, here we are. A whole book I made called How to Draw Ancient Greek Stuff Real Easy with, oh, look, you can see Pegasus and all sorts of stuff. Have we got ancient, have we got creatures? What have we got in creatures? Uh, Kerberos, dang, 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 the souls of the dead and Karen the Boatman. And there we are, the Golden Fleece and Octopus Monster of the Deep, stuff like that. So there you are. Is available on Amazon. <laughs> Shoe Rainer, how to draw ancient Greek stuff real easy. You can go and order it now. <laughs> um, where are we now? Do you have any bits? Uh, infectiously smiley. There we are. Amy, he has a whole series. Exactly. Uh, and Ellen, uh, what are my thoughts on Albert Camus? I have no thoughts on Albert Camus. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry, no. Uh, Matt Marshall, his sketchbook story videos really made me want to draw more. Great, good. That's, I have a question, sir. Do I always draw in the same style or do you sometimes go for more realistic urban sketching life studies? Depends what you mean by realistic. I don't know if I got my... Where could I find... Um, let's take this one. So this is like... A sketchbook for I'll put it over here on the on the overhead camera and zoom out. So this is still quite cartoony, but this is live sketching. So this was um, the Great Malarkey, which was like a week long festival, uh, children's book festival, um, and I, I don't know whether you would call that the same style. Um, so this is in Hull, which is a port town. So I went and drew that while I was there, um, and I was just drawing people who were coming. It's Jeremy Strong, the children's author. Um, drawing things that I saw. These were sort of, you know, people, um, you know, actors on stilts. Um, and we, some kids were making creatures out of socks. So I was drawing all the socks that they made. And these were all drawn very, very quickly. So these are people. This is Jenny who has this little bookshop in a, um, a caravan um, and these were all various authors and while they're performing and <laughs> I was kind of drawing them and drawing bits from their stories uh, who's that Steve Cole 
Um, so, so this is. I don't know what. I don't know how you would describe it. That, you know, but this is this is live drawing. Um, outside. And I, th and I think they probably. I think they. I feel they got better as the week went on. <laughs> There's an awful lot of drawing in one week. <laughs> and uh, they were fun. Yeah. Uh, Jamila Gavin. I haven't seen Jamila for a long time. Um, and then yeah, and this was this was this is I think this was the Saturday and Sunday where it, it got just a lot more fun and there were a lot more kids around sort of doing stupid things. This guy was amazing, Jesper Lacour. Uh, he was telling Viking stories and he was just really get into it. These lovely musicians. Um, all the volunteers who were helping. <laughs> So oh, this all takes me back. These are all the kind of things kids made out of toilet rolls, <laughs> um, just stuff. So I suppose all of these take me mostly at the maximum, I suppose, 20 minutes. But many of them are. So it's just I just saw this pile of tram prams outside, and it said no prams inside, so they're all outside. And uh, you know, so you just sit down and draw them and do it. There we go. Does that kind of answer your question? I don't know. I don't know. Uh, Dr. Kerman. Uh, oh, we're over an hour now. So there we are. Um, good. Stunning. Remember the sketchbook story? Question. They're always drawing the same style. This is relax asked. Or do I go for more realistic? See, I call that more realistic urban sketching. I've studied, but, but it's still in my kind of cartoony style, I suppose, isn't it? Uh, Jinko near Yosemite, stunning mountains, worthy of drawing, fantastic. Yeah. Oh, six petals. Sorry, Amy. There we go. <laughs> uh, Chris Mice, ha ha. Some people are very particular about their nibs. I bought up a lot of old unopened packs that are over a hundred years old, and the actual dip pens that I use are the same. Fantastic. And uh, do you stick them in potatoes? <laughs> I go, I got a video about that somewhere. Uh, I can't think where. I can't remember where I got picked up the tip when you get a new nib it's covered in lacquer and all that sort of stuff if you stick it into a potato and leave it there for half an hour it comes out primed and ready to use it's fantastic um merlin picture books could you draw a painting easel from a back view what you mean like somebody you know I, I could, but I'm not going to. <laughs> run out of time. Could you redraw my drawing of a person if I send it to you? No, Thomas Garden. No, you do that yourself. Amy says thank you. Uh, not my real name. Your favourite country to visit. That's a tricky one. That's a really tricky one. I think, I don't know. I think the favourite country I like to visit is usually the one I'm in at the moment, at the time. So got out of that one didn't I there we go <laughs> um thank you for taking your time day time out of your day to show us your awesome drawings that's a pleasure Han Ellen so uh because you draw a hoplite can you draw a Roman soldier uh I, I'll maybe maybe I'll make a maybe I'll make um a how to draw Roman stuff book one day I'm talking to my publishers about doing a series of picture books like this and t taking this on to a bigger series but uh I haven't heard from them for a while. All the all the book um, all all the book fairs, the uh, the London book fair and the Milan book fair, the the Bologna book fair, which is mainly for children's books, they've been cancelled because of coronavirus. So all sorts of stuff going on in yeah. So um, relax. This was interesting to see indeed. Thank you, Jessica. Tell you one hour goes so quick. I know we're over one hour. I'm just about to close up now. So uh uh there we are. <laughs> uh Dahlia, hello, sorry I'm too late. Never mind. Moomin bets. Enjoyed the session, thank you. Chris Miners. Lol no. Although I know of the tip, in fact I'm usually too lazy to prep the nibs and they always seem to work fine. Well that's okay, good, fab. So uh and uh, story thanks for the answer okay there we are i am gonna go and have a nice cup of tea um yeah <laughs> this is about five past five here i'm gonna go make myself a nice cup of tea thank you for being here and coming up with all these suggestions and in the meantime i'm gonna press this button well thanks for watching and if you enjoyed that 
then please do make sure you are subscribed to the Shoe Rainer Drawing channel. And while you're about it, click the little bell next to the subscribe button and you will be notified when the next live drawing video will be. In the meantime, keep drawing, 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 practice, 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 and I'll see you next time. You take care now. Bye-bye.